what is up people? I get this question quite often from web developers um, asking me what is a great server technology to host static websites. So static websites as in like React.js, Angular, um, Bootstrap, CSS, JavaScript, jQuery. And in this video, I'm going to show you guys a great technology for hosting static sites and it's called Nginx. Let's go. So you might be thinking, why Nginx? It is simple. First of all, Nginx is extremely fast. It is designed to cater for thousands of requests per second. It's also extremely lightweight. Um, you can hardly notice its uh, memory and CPU footprint when you're looking at a box. The other thing is it's also optimized to serve static files and it's great to serve SSL traffic. Now, many runtimes like Node and Golang um, are not recommended to sit on the public edge. You, they, they always recommend you have these behind some kind of a proxy or load balancer. Now, Nginx is a load balancer. It's designed to sit in the thick of public traffic. So it also helps reduce the attack surface on our website. Right, so this is uh, very simple. You're gonna need four things. The first thing you're gonna need is Docker for Windows. So go ahead and install that if you have Windows, otherwise Linux or Mac, you can just install Docker. And um, I'm gonna put a blog post link in the description where I've written up everything I'm about to show you so you can copy the code and run it as well. Now, the other three things you're gonna need is this Docker file. Here we have a Docker file. We are pulling down Nginx Alpine. Alpine is a tiny operating system and Nginx and Alpine together is about 16 megabytes, reducing the attack surface dramatically. So if an attacker gets access to our Nginx web server and they log in, they're able to access it. They only have like 16 megabytes of things that they can actually use. So it is um, a much smaller attack surface than them breaching like a full Ubuntu or Debian server. So that's the benefit of running a container. Um, the other thing is we copy in our Nginx configuration. So we're going to need an Nginx conf and I'm going to show you guys how to copy in an HTML file. Now, if you have CSS, PNG and JavaScript, um, you will just uncomment these lines and that's the Docker file. Okay, the other thing you're going to need is the Nginx configuration file. You can just copy this again from my blog post. Um, the first line here is we're running as an unprivileged Nginx user and that is again to reduce the attack surface. So if an attacker gained access to the server, there's not much you can do with this user. We're running one worker process. This is more configuring the error log and the process ID and also the number of connections that we want. The HTTP block is global configuration. So here we just include our default MIME types, some default settings about the log um, format and the access log that we enable. And um, then the next block is quite important. This is the server block. Now we're gonna say we wanna listen on port 80. And the next line, the location status is very important because if you're running behind a load balancer or you're running in Kubernetes, you always wanna let the outside world know whether you're healthy or not. So if you're running in a container orchestrated environment, DCOS, Docker Swarm, Kubernetes, um, the orchestrator needs to know whether you're healthy or not. So this is a good way of indicating healthy status. The other thing you need is um, the location slash. This will tell um, Nginx that any request that comes to this box will hit the index page. This is your home page of the website. The other bit that you'll need is this block over here. This is telling Nginx to serve JavaScript, J, uh, JPEGs, PNG, and CSS. If there are any other types you need to serve up, you need to add them to this list. Um, all static content need to be copied into this folder over here. Now, the last bit that you need is um, the send file to turn on. Now, Nginx is optimized to serve static content, enabling the send file. Now, um, by default, Nginx handles file transmission itself and copies the file into buffer before sending it. Enabling the send file directive eliminates the step of copying the data into the buffer and enables copying direct uh, direct copying data from one of the file descriptors to another. So this just helps serving static files. Now the last bit that we're going to need is just an index.html. So you would put your HTML file like this and this could be a minified bundled depending on your build process just a HTML file of any kind. Um, I've just copy pasted a sample here with hello world 
um, and I'm gonna go ahead and build this. Files in the same folder and you have everything ready, you can run this Docker build. It's gonna tag our image with our server as the image name. So if I run that, it is built. And to start up the server, we're gonna need Docker run, IT for interactive, just in this case. On a server, you would run this as dash D for background mode. And dash dash RM is just, I want to remove the container when I um, stop this demo. And I'm going to expose this on the outside world on port 80, 81, and inside the container 80. And we just give the image name. And if I run this, our image is up. Now, once my web server is running, I can go ahead and go to the browser and go to 8081. And we can see my static website is up and running. Simple as that. So if you guys are interested in running this, I've created a medium blog post explaining exactly the details I've just done with taking you through the sample code as well, as well as all the configuration. And right here, I have a GitHub guest. So you can click into that and you can get all the files and run the, the commands as well. So yeah, let me know down in the comments if this was helpful. Hope this helped you guys. Um, hit the like button, subscribe and peace. Oh,